Okay, Jeannie, so tell me what is a typical day like for you? And if you want me to pretend to be a student, I'll turn my camera so you can only see the top of my head. I mean, is this essentially what you guys look at every day? I know it is. I see my kids see. stuff. I see and hear all kinds of things. Yeah. <laughs> so, I bet you do. So tell um, us, what's a typical, uh, t are you lecturing the whole time? Are there breakout rooms, uh, projects? Um, How have you been able to do this for a, almost a year now? Yeah. Um, so I start my morning with my advisory group, which is my home base. And I really try to work on building relationships with that group. So, um, you know, it's a lot of dialogue with the kiddos. And, you know, it's like, uh, by all means necessary, they can contribute. They can put things in the chat. They can unmute and talk. They can, there's even like the annotate feature where they can write on my slides. It's been really interesting to see the different ways kids want to communicate their thinking. And um, so that's how I start. And then we have a block schedule. So I will see one class for 90 minutes. Then we have a half hour break. Usually I can touch base with some kids in that time. I'm sending a lot of emails, texting parents, where's your kid? And then we have another block. Yeah, yeah. go <laughs> and ahead. Then we, and then we have lunch and then the third block. So it's, it's a pretty long day. Those blocks are 90 minute long, minutes long. And there's- How does that block. grab you? Do you like the 90 minutes or is that, I mean, that's very different than a 50 mm -hmm. minute class and then changing and you know being able to get a new class in. I have taught in a block schedule school before. So I actually um, have not had too much trouble with that. I really feel like I end up with time to connect with kids. So the flow of class, you know, we have a discussion that's like on the computer, like a typed discussion. And then we have activities and we, then we have some sort of writing project that we're doing or something. And I'm able to go into breakout rooms and connect with kids and have a lot of one-on-one -on -one conversations or small group conversations with them. So if they were shorter, I think it would be really hard to reach kids. So it's been pretty good. Dorothy, what about you? What's it, it, what's it like doing ELA for sophomores and juniors? What's, what's a typical day like for you? Um, a typical day um, in my classroom, my virtual classroom, is um, we see uh, half of our students on one day and then the other half on another day. And I should tell you, our students petitioned to have us change the schedule. And our superintendent agreed to it. See, our kids are pretty vocal. So they decided, and they looked at other school models and decided that they were very stressed out having to be online all day. So I'll see three of my classes on one day, maybe two on another day. We meet with all of our kids um, on Wednesday. And the afternoon is just for asynchronous time, any time that we need to tutor students or connect with students. But a typical day is, I make a production out of attendance. We spend, I spend 10 minutes, you know, listening to voices or encouraging them to uh, turn on their cameras. Um, and it, it works out. I'm, I'm finding that I get a much better response when I take a little bit of extra time, um, like you, Janine, to really connect with the kids. It's harder online, of course. It's harder to assess uh, whether or not they're struggling because some of them are under the covers, right? So, yeah. so um, it seems to, believe it or not, um, my students are fairly receptive to that. And they're even more receptive because our superintendent agreed to allow them to change their schedule. Beth, give us the day in the life of you in terms of your classrooms and your kids and teaching Spanish. We start out every morning, we have an AB schedule. So my uh, periods, period one, I see half my students on A days and half on B. So that's similar to Dorothea's yeah. schedule in that regard. But on the days that I don't see my students, I still have a first uh, morning check-in. So I do get to connect with all my students every day. It's just a matter of uh, who I see on which day. and. I've required them to keep their computers on. With, with language, it's important for me to be able to see their faces and to see them speak. So when, especially when we get into the breakout rooms and I, I'm, I'm like Jeannie said, using the breakout rooms, it makes it so much more personal, I think, to be able to touch base with those students. 
you know, I, we're also talking about learning loss. We talked about it with the superintendents and, and, and Dr. Vitti and Dorothea, let me ask you, because it almost feels like it comes in and rests on your shoulders. Um, so you have to continue to do the output that you were usually doing a year before. You lost the spring and now you're finding your way through through this. Um, as from a teacher's perspective, what do you think about that and what are you working on? Well, you know, I struggle with this one because of course we want our children to do well, right? We wanna narrow that achievement gap. But I think it's really important, um, at least, and I can only speak for my district, you know, we have a lot of struggling children, we have a lot of poverty. Um, yeah. I really believe that when the kids are better taken care of, when their psychosocial needs are cared for, they will bounce back. They will, right, continue to improve. So for me, I'm a little bit more flexible, right? Um, I have conversations with my students about how important it is for them to demonstrate progress. However, that's um, not as it's important, but I think their emotional needs, um, uh, the, caring for their emotional needs are also important and helping them understand that when you're struggling, um, we're here, I'm here. Beth, you wanted to say? Yeah, you had mentioned, Dorothea, about the psychosocial uh, aspect of it. Sure. Uh, I spent oh, a good 45 minutes today with a student just because she was so overwhelmed yeah. by the whole situation. And it's it, 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 I believe that that's the most important thing for us as, as educators is to understand that these are kids, these are human beings, and their whole apple cart was disrupted. And Absolutely. we need to be there for them first and foremost. And if we show that outpouring, they will work. Uh, I think the most important thing is that we don't let this pressure for these expectations that some of which are a little bit made up rest on the shoulders of the children. They should right. not be under so much pressure. So we need to nurture them. We need to coach them. We need them on track and moving forward yes. in their learning, but we do not need to put the stress of learning loss on the kids. That's right. 